Apple just announced the Apple Watch Series 10. And I know this is gonna sound awkward, but uh, when it comes to watches, it's not the size of the watch that makes it feel large, it's the depth and the thickness of the device that makes it really feel big and bulky. It's how high it sits up above your wrist that really makes a watch feel big and clunky. And to put this to the ultimate test, Apple has made the Apple Watch Series 10 bigger, but also thinner. And I, for one, am really excited about it. Here, check this out. The Series 9 came in a 45 millimeter and a 41 millimeter option. The Series 10 is gonna come in two larger sizes, a 46 millimeter option and a 42 millimeter option. So only one millimeter larger, but check this out. With this larger size, we're also getting a larger screen with a higher screen resolution. The Series 9 was a 1.9 inch display with a 484 by 396 pixel display. The 41 millimeter was a 1.69 inch display with a 430 by 352 pixel display. The new OLED screen here on the Series 10 is bigger, but it's also wider. The 46 millimeter has a 496 by 416 pixel display, and the new 42 millimeter display is 446 by 374. Or to put all of this a different way, the larger model used to have a little bit more than 190,000 pixels, and the newer model has over 206,000 pixels all packed onto this tiny little display, or about eight to 10% more than the previous version, according to my you know quick back of the hand math. Now, Apple is claiming a 30% increase in display size when we are comparing this to the Apple Watch Series 3. And this new wide angle OLED display screen is brighter when it's viewed from an angle, which means it's easier to read when you're just kind of quickly taking a glance at your watch. Now, if you're freaking out about the larger sizes of this watch because you really don't want something big on your wrist, check this out. The Apple Watch Series 9 has a depth of just 10.7 millimeters, whereas the Series 10 is 10% thinner, or 9.7 millimeters. And these new watches are lighter weight also. The old S9 was either 39 grams or 32 grams on the aluminum editions. The S10 is 36.4 for the 46 millimeter edition and 30 grams for the 43 millimeter edition. Now I know that's not a massive amount of weight, uh, but it's a little bit lighter, which I think is nice. And then there's also the titanium casing that Apple offers, which is 20% less than the steel version of the Series 9, or 34.4 grams for the 42 millimeter and 41.7 grams for the 45 millimeter. And that titanium option also has a sapphire front crystal, so it should also be a little bit more durable against scratches. Now the new Apple Watch Series 10 also comes with a thinner but more functional speaker. You can now play music using it without pairing headphones to your watch if that's something that you want to do. But there wasn't a ton of details about the S10 system and package chip that's coming on this watch. And it sounds to me like it's pretty similar to the S9 chip with its four core neural engines for machine learning tasks and AI tasks. But uh, couple that with the new lower power consuming wide angle OLED display, and we have a good bit more efficiency with this watch. So does the Apple Watch Series 10 have longer battery life? Well, it sounds like Apple is, you know, again using those extra cycles to refresh the display more frequently. So instead of once a minute, it'll update the display once a second when it's not in that raise to wake mode or when it's not in focus. And I do have to admit, I think that this is gonna be nice and that's just me as someone who loves to see the second hand on my watches for both workouts or when I'm timing other athletes. And the Apple Watch Series 10 is also getting sleep apnea detection. And if you're not familiar with sleep apnea, snoring is a, is a big symptom of sleep apnea. Uh, but sleep apnea is a sleep disorder that affects just like a staggeringly large percentage of the population. It's about 39 million US adults that have uh, obstructive sleep apnea, meaning that their upper airway becomes blocked while they're sleeping. So that's about, you know, one out of every 12 adults, which just seems crazy. Uh, but what seems maybe more crazy is that the American Academy of Sleep Medicine estimates that as many as 80% of people with obstructive sleep apnea are actually undiagnosed. And I actually have a feeling that I'm probably one of those people that falls into that category. 
you know, depending on you know whether or not I've had a few beers or whether or not I'm like sleeping on my side correctly, I, I don't know. Uh, but in this case, the Apple Watch Series 10 will provide you with an update after about 30 days or so of monitoring, and it'll provide you with information within the health application on your iPhone. And you'll get a little alert on your watch if it picks up on anything in particular. And Apple is actually expecting that feature to be active towards the end of this month. Uh, just like any medical device, uh, it'll actually have to go through clearance by the FDA here in the United States, and timeframes are probably going to depend on your particular country and your particular country's regulatory bodies. It's it's similar to what has happened in the past with um, ECG capabilities on the Apple Watches, uh, but there are a ton of other updates to this watch that aren't exactly hardware specific. WatchOS 11 is bringing the new Vitals application, which you can kind of think of as, as a centralized hub for um, those of us who want to track some of our key health metrics that are measured while we're sleeping. Uh, the metrics that are being tracked are your heart rate, your respiratory rate, uh, wrist temperature, blood oxygen saturation, and sleep duration. And I made a full video talking about the new Vitals application, if you guys wanna check that out. I'll link it up here in the top right corner of this video. Uh, but there's also a new Translate app in the Apple Watch, which actually looks pretty cool. And then the Apple Watch Series 10 also gets a similar depth sensor to what we've had on the Apple Watch Ultra, meaning that you can use it as a bit of a dive computer. Now I know that this is small, but I'm actually really excited that the water temperature is now going to show for swimming events uh, or swimming activities. I actually really like knowing the water temperature when I'm doing an open water swimming event. And then the lap swimming app has actually received a small update where you can now follow specific workouts. Uh, and you're also going to be able to see a few more swim specific related metrics like your leave interval. There's also a new tides app, like tides as in uh, ocean tides. So you can actually check surf conditions in over 5,000 different locations, which is pretty cool. Uh, but those are just a few of the things that I'm excited about with the Apple Watch Series 10 device. But what about you guys? Uh, is there something that I missed here? Um, is there something in particular that you guys are excited about? Or is there something that you were excited about that maybe didn't get announced? Let me know in the comments section. You guys know me, you guys know that I love continuing the conversation down in the comments section. Uh, and there is a ton more, which I am planning on diving into. Uh, I'll of course put together some sort of ridiculous in-depth review on this Apple Watch Series 10. So if you are curious about any of this stuff, uh, make sure that you are subscribed. But either way, Apple Watch Series 10 or no watch at all, I really do hope that you're getting out there swimming, biking, running, rinsing, and repeating it all over again. And we will see you guys on the next one. Thank you.